Hello, my name is Jennifer Todd. And I, Yusuf Hamami. Our topic today is the St. Francis Dam and its failure. We're submitting this to Dr. Matthew Molden. For Geological Engineering, Fall Semester 2012, CEE 5984. Los Angeles is located in the southwest of California. The area was first developed by the Spanish in 1781. San Francisco Canyon, where San Francis Dam stood, is located in the northeast section of the county. The area around the former dam is composed of 500 feet of tertiary sediments, 500 feet of well-bedded red siltstone, shell, sandstone, and conglomerates of continental origin. These layers are covered by 2,700 feet of Piedmont deposits composed of coarse conglomerates, fanglomerates, and grain clastic rocks. In the west as well as the, as the south and southwest, the, Pied uh, the Piedmont deposits are sporadically found on non-marine conglomerates and big sandstones of the upper Miocene Mint Canyon formation. The sediments get gradually younger toward the south and west where fossiliferous beds are randomly distributed. The northeast part of the San Francisco area is composed of Cretaceous rocks known as Pelona schists, which are made of gray quartz uh, muscovite schists, metacrotite, and quartz vein. More, finding rev more findings reveal the, the possible existence of normal faulting in the northwest area between the Eocene and Miocene rocks and the Mint Canyon formation. These observations are based on the dip slip um, reverse faulting of pre- and post Mint Canyon all over the area. William Mulholland was working as a trencher when his team found a tree 600 feet below ground level. This led him to read a book on geology, and after reading the book, he decided to become an engineer. Even though he had no university training, he went on to have a long career in dam building. Reasons for the dam. In 1900, the population of Los Angeles was 170,298. In 1910, the population grew to 504,131. And in 1920, 936,455. Reasons for the population growth was the extension of the South Pacific Railroad, search for fertile land, discovery of oil, development of movie industry, and finally pleasant weather. Water supply does not meet the population boom. At that time, the main source of water was the Los Angeles River. However, due to the high demand, the flow of the water of the river dropped rapidly from 100 cubic feet per second in 1880s to 45 cubic feet per second in 1902. Fred Eaton, the newly elected mayor of the city, and William Mulholland thought about tapping into Owens Valley Reservoir, a long gravity aqueduct, 223 mil miles connecting the Owens Valley Reservoir to Los Angeles City was built. To accomplish this project, the two gentlemen had to cut through some loops, and like Mark Reisner said in his book, chickeneries, subterfuge, and strategies apply to obtain the water rights despite the discontentment of the Owens Valley farmers. The, res the reservoir started to dry, to dry out. The farmers, anger would not enough water to grow their crops. They formed an alliance and tried to redirect the water back to the lake by dynamiting the aqueduct. All efforts led to failure because Mol, uh, Mr. Eaton and Mull Holland already assured the majority of the water to the city. Construction of the dam. For the better use of the water supply by the Owen Lake, Mull Holland decided to build a dam in the neighboring San Francisco Canyon and call it the San Francis Dam. Mulholland picked up the site for its lower cost, then claimed he had a vision of a dam in this location of the San Francisco Canyon during the construction of the aqueduct. His argument was the fact that the canyon got narrow in this area, which would lead to a fairly small dam with a higher retention volume. Even though he recognized the geological challenges of the area, Mr. Mulholland was still convinced that the dam in this location would be the best solution. Originally, the St. Francis Dam stood 205 foot tall and held 30,000 acre feet in its reservoir. That would have been about a one year supply of water for LA. In 1923, just after the concrete pouring began, the design was revised due to increased demand. In 1925, the design was revised again, now 10 feet taller than the 1923 adjustment. There was nothing documenting an adjustment of the base width in either revision. There was also a wing dike that was added because it was now taller than the rock wall to the west. 
By the time it opened, the St. Francis Dam held 12 billion gallons of water, meaning its storage volume had increased by 27%. During the St. Francis Dam's two-year lifespan, there were some leaks that were reported, including a leak that had cloudy water flowing through it the day before the dam failed. Mulholland had inspected the dam, declaring it fine. Though, according to Mulholland, the failure of the dam was partially due to a hoodoo that made the dam susceptible to human aggression. There are, uh, other theories about the failure of the dam. The initial theory was that the western abutment failed first. According to this theory, the western part of the dam was underlain by a high-activity conglomerate which essentially dissolves in water. The failure of the western half of the dam caused an eddy-like backwash that caused the schist on the eastern side to fail. This theory was supported by large intact concrete blocks from the western part of the wall that still had foundation rock attached. Secondly, that the eastern part of the wall failed first. This theory states that the schist landslide on the eastern side was reactivated by pore pressure and the resulting gush of water caused the breaking of the western part of the wall. The dam's failure was most likely a combination of the previously stated theories. The following factors were probably the major culprits. None of the rock on which the dam was founded was competent enough for a structure of this magnitude. The dam was redesigned multiple times, but never well documented, and there was no width adjustment corresponding to the height changes. There was an old landslide in the schist to the east, and old landslides reactivate and slide again, and pore pressures were allowed to build up in fissures underneath the dam, causing uplift. Between 1910 and 1920, Los Angeles County grew by 46%. The rate of growth was continuing to rise in early 1920s when Mayor Fred Eaton and Superintendent of Department of War and Power William Mulholland started their crusade for water right acquisition. The San Francisco Dam was built to retain enough water to accommodate the fast-growing population of Los Angeles in time of drought and hardship. The San Francisco Dam disaster shows the consequences of not following proper engineering procedures. It also shows the consequences of lack of communication and understanding of fundamental geotechnical principles. Also, a proper field investigation may have averted the disaster. Finally, an adequately designed dam specific to the site would have had a better chance of success. No dam for you, girl.